What's up, Nail Geeks? I am back with Emily Damali's May 2021 releases. This week has kind of slipped past me. There are so many releases this week. So these are actually releasing tonight and or tomorrow, depending on the site you're checking out. Um, I have all new releases and three limited editions that will be launching alongside this set. These are so stunning, you guys. So let's dive right into the swatches. First up is Dead to the World. This is described as a dark red jelly base with metallic red micro glitter. So uh, if you are like me, you've been absolutely in love with her jelly glitters that she's been releasing the last couple of months. And this is a beautiful addition to that lineup. So the formula is very rich, smooth, and this gives you that strong, juicy jelly appearance when you go in with a glossy top coat. Now for opacity, I'm going to suggest two coats on it as it plumps up really easily and it packs a punch for full coverage on that second coat. Across the board, I think two coats is gonna be perfect for most. As you can see on the second coat, it is building up very nicely. And this does dry down flat, a touch thirsty, so you may wanna use a glitter smoothing top coat with it. Uh, definitely gonna depend on the type of top coat you are finishing off with. I would suggest something thicker in order to really smooth this one out. And this is a vampy lover's dream and you'll get that strong reddish glitter appearance. And next is Dreamscapes and Visions. This is a turquoise green jelly base with blue to purple Aurora shimmer and silver holographic micro glitters. I love it when Haley makes polishes like this with these types of glitters. It is so sparkly in person. And of course, this one is blue leaning. So I'm definitely a fan of that. This is one of my top picks. It's again, very blingy in person. Lots and lots of sparkle. And this has a somewhat jelly feel to it on application, but it's very squishy and easy to build up. Wonderful coverage happening here. So for opacity, I'm going to suggest two coats on this one and you'll be good to go. This one dries down very flat. Now, I didn't have any problems in terms of thirstiness per se, but again, you're going to want to use a thicker sort of top coat to finish this one off. Otherwise, if your normal top coat is on the thinner side, then you will probably need a glitter smoothing top coat. And on the full hand shot here, you can see just how glittery it is. It's so pretty. And the shimmer gives off a strong blue glow that shifts over to purple at angles. And next is example sentences. This is described as a light teal blue crelly base with assorted metallic micro glitters. This one is so fun. Another confetti sort of appearance. And the glitters are so cute. This one kind of reminds me... Um, in my opinion, of the movie Up for some reason, like the colorful balloons and the clouds against that blue base. And it's just so cute and fun. Definitely one that makes me think of like birthdays and all that good stuff. So this has a very creamy formula to it. It does have a touch of jelly squishiness to it, but it builds up very quickly to opacity. I'm going to suggest two coats on this one, and I think most will be good to go. The formula is light enough to see a pond effect between your layers, but it is thick enough and creamy enough that, again, beautiful coverage here. This one also dries down flat. I didn't have any problems in terms of texture with it, so I think most top coats are going to be perfectly fine with it. And next is Give Me a Remedy. This is a dark pink jelly base with a copper magnetic effect and silver metallic glitters. So a really strong magnetic. You'll see in just a moment when I magnetize it that it is just really obvious between the background and the magnetic pigment. So this has a heavier feel to the formula. It's somewhat on the jelly side, but a strong metallic feel on the brush strokes. And I'm going to suggest two coats for this one. Those of you who are new to magnetics, you want to magnetize each of your coats and you want to magnetize when you finish off with a glossy top coat. This one does have a touch of thirstiness to it because the glitters are on the larger side. So this is another one that you may want to use a glitter smoothing top coat with just in case, depending on the type of top coat you are using. This one kind of like soaked in my top coat. So I personally am leaning more towards suggesting a glitter smoother underneath your top coat. And next is It Must Have Been. This is a dark base with iridescent flakes and green, blue, purple, red shifting magnetic effect. 
This is really lovely as well. Uh, so we have two magnetics for this collection. And this one also has quite a bit of a strong metallic feel on the brush strokes. Easy peasy formula here very easy to build to opacity. I can see this also doubling as a topper if you wanted to wear it over black, but personally, I don't see a need to use an undie with this one because it just popped very well at two magnetized coats. This has a lot of movement with it as well when you're finished, and the magnetic pigment is very, very shifty. So you'll easily see, depending on your lighting, this green to blue shift and then purple to red at angles. Really nice. And I really liked the iridescent flakes pop so, so well against that black jelly sort of base. Now, remember, I am magnetizing each coat and I'm magnetizing after I use my glossy top coat. I think when you magnetize with a quick dry glossy top coat, it is re-wetting those bottom layers. So you want to make sure to finish off with a magnet once more just so that you can seal in your design. And next is short term. This is described as a gray curly base with copper to gold to green shifting Aurora shimmer. This is another one of my top picks for the set. I really fell in love with this base. It's very neutral, definitely leaned a bit flirting on the nude side against my skin tone. I think this is gonna absolutely play up against your undertones to uh, you, but I just think it's so gorgeous and the shimmer is very, very strong. And indoor lighting, normal lighting, it's gonna take on this strong copper appearance with gold and green at angles, very lovely. And I think you'll see that green shift come out to play in shaded lighting. Now this has a smooth, rich, creamy formula to it. I think two coats is gonna be perfect for most and it does dry down flat. So I would suggest using a glossy top coat with this one, though I can see how it would look really cool mattified too, but I'm a glossy gal at the end of the day and I prefer my nails to be really glossy. And next is Turning Tides. This is a pale aqua blue jelly base with pink to green to blue Aurora shimmer and metallic silver glitters. So this one has a very metallic feel on application with a touch of a jelly lean to it, but it's also very squishy. So I'm gonna strongly suggest going in very thin on your coats as the glitters are also of the larger, heavier type. So just go in soft to prevent any sort of balding and allow those glitters to just lay down nice and flat and behave. I had no issues getting them out of the bottle, so no need for fishing. And for opacity, I think two coats is perfect. Again, this is one of those that have a very strong squishy feel to it. So if you go in too heavy handed, you're gonna have a uh, over buildup, if that makes sense. Now this also dries down flat and thirsty, so I would strongly suggest a thicker glossy top coat and or a glitter smoother. Those glitters are uh, quite heavy once again, so I think something to smooth them out will definitely fit the best to even everything out but they're so worth it. And between that really shifty shimmer and the reflective appearance of those glitters, there's so much going on here. And next is Wasteland. This is a murky green base with very strong copper to gold to green Aurora shimmer and gold metallic micro glitters. So this one is uh, quite jelly-like on application. There is quite a bit of a squishy formula to it as well. It is very strong on the shimmer action. So in indoor lighting, you're gonna see that reddish copperish glow with it, and it angles and easily shifts over to that gold and a strong luminous green. Now for opacity, I'm gonna suggest between two and three coats. On the second coat, I wanted to see just how strong I can make that base color pop. And I felt that that third coat really helped to bring out the base color against that shimmer effect. So really gonna depend on your preference, but I think the video is giving you a good idea of the difference between the second and third coat. Now this one also dries down quite flat, so I'm gonna suggest a glossy top coat with this one as well. And you can see on the final look here, it has this overlaid sort of appearance with it. Really cool. I think some snake-like stamping or scale stamping would look cool with this one. And it is just very shifty in a warm, neutral way. And next is limited edition 272. This is a light brown base with a strong violet overlay. Another one of my top picks. So the three limited editions that I swatched, I fell in love with, and I would also classify these three as my top picks in the set too. These are so lovely. Now remember, for Emily Damali, limited edition means that it is limited to one big batch. So once these sell out, that's it. Now this has a very creamy formula to it, and it's 
just packed full of shimmer. So I'm going to strongly suggest going in too harsh with your brush strokes to prevent any sort of streaking. And when you just allow it to slowly level in, I went in a touch heavy handed on that second coat, but it was just so that I can use the brush to manipulate it in a really light way to prevent any streaking. And as you can see, it just self leveled really well. This is beautiful and it's very, very glowy. And next is LE273. This is a sandy brown base with silver holographic micro glitters and a strong green to pink shifting shimmer. Again, another one of my top picks in this release. This is so pretty. It's very neutral in terms of the base color. I almost want to classify it as a rose gold, but it's just so sparkly in person, easy to build up. And the shimmer is also quite strong with this greenish sort of glow. It does have a pink shift to it at extreme angles, but what you see on the video is what you're going to see in indoor lighting and normal lighting. It's very complex, lots going on here, but at the end of the day, it's sparkly, somewhat neutral leaning on myself and very, very pretty. Easy application on this one, two coats, I think it's gonna be perfect for most. I didn't really see a need per se to use a glitter smoother, but I did go in just a touch heavier on my top coat to get those glitters to pop really well. And finally is LE275. This is a dark teal blue shimmer with silver holographic micro flakes. So no surprise with this one here, spoiler alert. Uh, of course it is blue, but again, one of my top picks. This is a beautiful, vibrant, medium, but very deep blue color. It's gorgeous and it's very creamy and smooth on application. I think two coats, once again, is gonna be perfect for most. Very easy to build up and the shimmer gives it this nice glowy depth sort of appearance. Now the holographic micro flakes are what I consider more of the finer particle size. So it just gives you that starry sky sort of appearance. Now this, because it is packed full of shimmer, again, I'm gonna suggest going in light on your brush strokes to prevent any sort of streaking. But as you can see on the second coat here, it self levels very well. This also dries down flat. So I'm gonna suggest a glossy top coat to finish it off. And you can see just how gorgeous that is on my full hand shot. Now the May releases will launch tonight on the US and international site, May 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And they will launch on the Australian site since technically they're in the future. Uh, Friday, May 28th at 10 a.m. Australian time. I will link both shops below for you guys. Remember those limited editions are limited to one batch. Once they're gone, they're gone. And I'll also link you guys to the Facebook group if you wanna see additional swatches, all that good stuff, including any additional limited editions that will be coming out alongside this launch. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.